Sample final. Chem 110A, problem number 7. Report the answer for this calculation to the proper number of significant figures. My advice on this always, so that you don't get things confused and you allow yourself a built-in check, is to go ahead and calculate the raw value of the entire problem without any kind of rounding errors. You know for sure that the answer should be somewhere very close to the results that you would get by punching all this into your calculator. And when I do that, I get raw calculation 0 0.02064724 so your answer is going to have maybe that many sig figs or maybe that many or 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 that many and your job is to figure that out and you can't tell just by looking you have to figure out the sig figs within the parentheses and since these are addition subtraction problems within the parentheses you know how you have to do the significant figures for addition subtraction you are lining up decimals you are drawing lines to the least number of places past the decimal the least carefully measured digit here, that's the hundredth place. So you do your math. Eight, two, three. All right, this is three places past and two places past. So the answer is going to be two places past. Draw our line here. And this number has three sig figs. So can you see that based on just this calculation, within this parentheses, because this becomes this number multiplied by that number, that at best we can have that many sig figs. Because no matter how many this has, the very most we can have is three. This could limit it to two or one sig fig, but it could never have more than three. Okay, so let's figure out how to do this one. Well, if you remember, when we have exponentials that are added or subtracted, we have to convert numbers and restate them so that the exponentials are the same. We have to rewrite one of the numbers, and it doesn't matter which one. Let's turn this one into a number that is times 10 to the minus 4th. So, since 10 to the minus 3rd is bigger than 10 to the minus 4th, we would have to divide this part, the exponential part, by 10 to turn it into times 10 to the minus 4th. If that's true, in order to keep the value and the sig figs the same, we would multiply the value part by 10 to make it the same. So what's the results? 52.1 times 10 to the minus fourth. If you've done this correctly and you type 52.1 EE minus 4 and hit equals in your calculator, it has to give you the same value as this. If you switch these around for some reason, you thought that this was multiplying by 10 and this was dividing by 10, the results if you type that in your calculator and hit equals, would not be the same as this value. It's a built-in check. Okay? You need to have it because you have that calculator in front of you. Messing that part up messes up the problem completely. Okay. Now that we have both numbers in 10 to the minus fourth exponent, exponential part, we can line up the decimal places. Four point 
395 times 10 to the minus 4th. We're subtracting these two. Uh, 10 to the minus 4th falls out to the bottom. What's the result of that part? Well, the results of that part are 4, 7, point 705, lining up the decimals. Now, where do we draw the line to determine the number of sig figs? The only way, look, if you take this number minus that number, you'll get that in your calculator. Or the equivalent of that, 4.7705 times 10 to the minus third. But it's up to you to understand how many sig figs are in that actual, cal actual calculation. This is one place past. This is three places past. The answer can only be one place past, which means this number has three sig figs as well. So this number turns out to be a number with three sig figs multiplied by this number, which turns out to be a number with three sig figs. So the answer has to have a number with three sig figs. How would you take that raw value and write it to three sig figs? 0 0.0206. Does that last digit round up? No, it does not. There's your answer. If you want to get better at this, and you need to because that's going to be on this problem and on your final exam in Camera 10B. Chapter 1, parts B, C, D, and H as well. Okay, good luck.